Hi, welcome to another edition of the Alan Rosenberg Show. So I wasn't going to do a video on this, but I am. This is dedicated to my old camp friend Toba and all my old camp friends from the late 70s, I guess it was. Must have been the late 70s. Uh, still friends with them, see them on occasion. And um, back in those days and to, the, to these days as well, you had the two camps. I, as you probably know if you know my channel, was always... A huge Rolling Stones fan. The Stones are my band, my favorite band. But most people, certainly at camp and Tobler and a lot of others, they were in the Beatles camp. Now, the thing is, of course, is I love the Beatles as well. Uh, I actually have every Beatles album in stereo, in mono. I got the American presses. I got tons and tons of Beatles albums. But the thing about the Beatles is I can appreciate them. If I listen to them, obviously they're great. I just don't ever have a desire to really listen to the Beatles like the Stones. So the Stones is my favorite band. Anyway, uh, the Beatles, of course, I guess yesterday or so, they put out the final Beatles song. You know. Okay, we'll get to it. And, uh, you know, so it's huge news. It's going to sell a bazillion copies and the video is out and you know i've been listening to it so you know the background story uh the beatles are working on the anthology series 1995-1996 they meet up with yoko yono yoko gives them two cassette tapes of some uh, some demos that john lennon had left over notably uh three songs right and uh free as a bird which was on the first beatles uh, anthology and did it with Jeff Lynne of Electric Light Orchestra, and then they did Real Love, um, and now the third and final song. So Free as a Bird, I hated, still hate it. To me, it's really average Electric Light Orchestra. I don't care for it. It doesn't really sound like the Beatles to me. Um, more ELO. Real Love, I thought, was a much more popish song, but a better song. So let's talk about the new one now and then um it was a rough uh piano ballad just john lennon pretty much playing piano with both his hands um and his vocal on a really low budget cassette they were working on it for probably the third of the anthology series uh they just couldn't work with it the, it was too low fidelity they couldn't separate lennon's vocals from the piano and george harrison hated the song he thought it was Rubbish. That's exactly what his words were. Didn't want to work on it. Uh, now we fast forward. Uh, Peter Jackson, amazing filmmaker, is working on the huge Get Back documentary. The technology is there now where they could do the separation between Lennon's vocals and his piano. And from that, they could build it up to a new song, which is spearheaded by Paul McCartney, because obviously George Harrison, he passed away in uh, 2001. So um, they took Lennon's track, uh, and they really did a job on it. Uh, McCartney spearheaded it with Giles Martin, and they created really very much like a whole new tune. In fact, uh, if you're familiar with the original demo, and I am, uh, they actually cut out a third of it, because a third of the original version from John Lennon really goes nowhere. Um, they cut out a whole third, they added sections that didn't exist, and they sped it up a lot. Uh, made it more ear catchy, more easy on the ears, more commercial. And it, it's a good move. Uh, they cut out two pre-choruses that was strange in the original, uh, kind of awkward in the original uh, demo. Uh, McCartney adds vocals because a lot of the original vocals from John Lennon were just kind of eh, and didn't have complete lyrics, so... McCartney added into it. Uh, there's just, they say George Harrison's on the guitar. Uh, I don't really hear him. I guess he's there strumming a couple of strums, but, you know, McCartney does. There's a, actually in the new song now and then, there's a slide guitar solo reminiscent of George Harrison's trademark of It's McCartney. And Ringo Starr adds the basic drums, which is all the song needed, and he does a fine job. Uh, Giles Martin takes over where his dad is. He's one of the premier orchestrators, producers, uh, remixers, and Giles Martin adds really lush, very Beatlesque strings, um, a lot of post-production, put a lot of work into it, 
and uh, really filled out the sound beautifully. Um, so, what do I think of the song? I like it. You know, it's classic John Lennon. It's the minor chords. I don't know, maybe it's A minor, maybe like even an E minor it goes to. Very basic. But love that moody minor chords. Lennon's vocals, obviously, he's got such a great voice. And it's really beautifully captured in the separation. And it's up in the mix. And Lennon sounds great. And McCartney uh, adds perfectly, you know, the bass works really well. The slide guitar solo really well works well. And he fills in vocals really nicely as well. It, it, it's, it's really, really good. Uh, I like it. I think it's far superior than, uh, you know, the first two, which, like I said, free as a bird in real love. No. So anyway, that's the positive. Now let me talk about my feelings about the whole thing. And maybe it's because I'm a bit of a purist, or maybe I just take music too seriously. I can't stand the fact that they marketing this thing as the final Beatle track, the last Beatles track. I didn't like when they did Free as a Bird and Real Love on these. I didn't think it was the place for it. This is archive stuff from the Beatles, and they're creating a fiction. And this new song really is a fiction. Um, so bear with me, and I think if you keep an open mind, I think you're going to know in your heart that you're probably going to agree with me. It's nice to have a new Beatles song why are they doing this? You know why they're doing it? Because God knows, I don't know, who doesn't have the, the red and the blue album, but uh, apparently everybody needs to buy it for the 15th time. So now they're going to release a new version of it for $60 I just saw on Amazon. The new blue vinyl is going to be $60 because they're throwing on like eight extra tracks, including now and then. You know... There's, that's why. we got to get people to buy it and spend 60 bucks. so we're going to put Now and Then on it, on the, a new version of the Blue Album, which has been remastered a bunch of times already. Now it's going to be a new remix of it because they just keep reissuing the Beatles. The Beatles never broke up in 1970. They've been releasing the biggest selling albums every year they release an album, and it's it's been constant. Uh, so it just never goes away. They're still the biggest band in the world. Never, they're far ahead of the Stones or anybody else as far as sales. Um, so, you know, that's the thinking behind it, obviously. Um, but I have a problem with marketing it as a Beatles song, because it's not. John Lennon was sitting at the piano in the Dakota in 1977 or so, doing the demo for Now and Then, and it was not written about the Beatles, which their video makes it seem like I miss you and I want to return to you as if it's the Beatles. There's the video screens. You just watch it. But he didn't write it about the Beatles because he didn't care about the Beatles and he didn't care about Paul McCartney back in 1977. No, he was writing it about Yoko, his on and off relationship with her. But we'll make a, vi a bit of a video with all the Beatles in there playing together this song as if they really did that. Harrison plays a little bit on this uh, song, but he's all he's on the video as well. The reality is he thought the song was rubbish. He didn't want to have anything to do with it. You know, Ringo, well, he'll come in and play some basic drums. That's all that was needed on it. This is a McCartney effort. He did a great job with Giles Martin, but the reality is I can't stomach putting this out as the final Beatles song and let's just say, he'll say, well, if I asked John, I'm sure he would have wanted to do this. You know what? I didn't know John Lennon, but you'll never convince me that when John Lennon was sitting at the piano in 1977 writing this, that he was thinking this would be a great Beatles song in 2023 or ever. And that's just my feeling. Um, it just makes me upset. And it's not just this Beatles, how, you know, marketing and rock and roll and branding, it's just... It just makes me crazy uh, as more of a purist. You know, don't sell it for what it's not. And I don't, you know, here's the Beatles' love. Was that a, the final Beatles album? Was that a Beatles album? No, it's Circus de Soleil, Cirque du Soleil of the Beatles. And you can buy it, and it's really good for what it is. But it's not a Beatles album. And this is not a Beatles song, at least in my opinion. It's a cash grab to sell umpteen new albums of the red album and the blue album because 
God knows, I don't know who the hell doesn't have that album. And that's the problem I have. But it's not just the Beatles, you know. Uh, listen, I love The Who. And I have these out here for a reason. Because I still see The Who live and they're great. But is it really The Who? You know, after John Entwistle died, to me, it was kind of over. I'm still glad they tour. It's fun to see them. But when they release a new album like this, or like this one, it's not a band. You know, they don't even play together. You know, Townsend does his stuff, and he sends the tapes electronically to Daltrey to add his vocals. And you know what? When you listen to this album, and when you listen to this album, that's what it sounds like. It doesn't sound like an organic band. They're just putting it out there. Uh, even these albums with Kenny Jones, at least these were band albums. You know, the band played. Say what you want about Hackney Diamond, the new Stones album. And maybe they shouldn't continue without Charlie Watts, or maybe they should. But when they made this album, they were in a studio playing together live in a room. They did overdubs, of course, but they were playing as a band. And it sounds like it. And this is a fabrication. And that's the problem. Is it a really nice, touching song? It is. Is it good to have it out there? It is. Should it be the final Beatles song? No, because it's not a Beatles song. That's just my feelings. Um, I'd love to know uh, your opinions. Um, I'm probably going to get beat up on this. But I think if you really don't analyze it and just think in your heart, you know this is not the Beatles. The Beatles is when they were together. Not this. But it's a really nice song. And far superior and free as a bird in real love, in my opinion. So uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. Toba and my camp friends, if you ever see this video, please comment on my video. Let me know what you think. Um, but uh, there you have it. Uh, if you're new to my channel and you didn't subscribe, camp friends, please uh, subscribe. And maybe check out my other videos. Most importantly, I always say, stay safe, stay healthy. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you next time on the Alan Rosenberg Show.